Friends, when you really start flowing in the favor of God, there are four things that are about to hit you that you are going to have to understand how to walk in them. When, when kingdom adjustment happens, there's four things that you will have to be able to navigate through. The first one is explosive favor. It sounds good, but you're going to have to walk in key discernment. Explosive anointing. When your anointing in ministry or business happens, it can be the very thing that makes you or completely breaks you. The next thing is explosive creativity. You are going to have to be creative in how you live your life, you use your time, who you invest in, because when the anointing and the favor of God's on you, everybody's going to want your time. You're going to have to figure out in your ministry and business, who are you going to let go? Who are you going to hire? You're going to have to readjust some people around. Everything is different. And you're going to have explosive building. You are going to have to learn how to build fast. You know, if you were putting together a Lego set with your kids and it says, this takes six hours to build. But what if you were given 30 minutes? You're going to have to learn how to build fast. So, explosive favor when the favor of god hits you everything changes I, i've been in times in my life in, in ministry also in business when there was explosive favor and, and it hit the very thing that my wife and i were doing we learned how to use our time wisely don't just throw an hour away here an hour away there but use your time wisely because explosive favor it doesn't last a long time in one particular area like there's times that, that your church may have explosive favor for three months and all of these people come in well then you spend a season discipling them there's times in your life your business may jump i remember one of our businesses one time it grew by 500 percent in five months and then after that I was able to really stabilize this that business and it took a while to make sure everything was running properly okay Isaiah 58 11 Yahweh will always guide you where to go and what to do he will fill you with refreshment even when you are dry and in a difficult place a lot of times in life when you're in a dry and difficult place that is the birthing ground for explosive favor. When the favor of God hits you, everything changes. Now remember, when God puts the favor upon you, it is for the glory of God. Let me explain it. When, when you're in a dry and a difficult place, everybody sees it and everybody knows it. But when the favor hits you, everybody sees it and everybody knows it. How do you act? When you're struggling financially, you're fasting and praying, and when God blesses you, do you still have that same intensity and in fasting and praying, God, because you bless me financially? What do you want me to do with my finances? You know, whenever that favor hits you, how you react when you're extremely blessed is a good sign of where your character is, what's really on the inside of you. Whenever your ministry grows, your business grows, whatever comes out of you is what was inside of you all alone. Sometimes people pray out of desperation versus a true heart for God. Psalms 18, 22. For I've kept my eyes focused on his righteous words and I've obeyed everything that he told me to do. If you will always keep your eyes on the Lord and you will always have a quick and genuine yes in your spirit, your whole life will be a kingdom adjustment. That's where the Bible says we go from glory to glory to glory. In our house, to go from the first floor to the second story, it's 18 steps. A lot of times in life, your life is 18 steps. Why did you stop at step seven? Why did you walk back to step five? You're not moving forward. You have to keep going step after step after step after step after step. And you know, when you lose your humility, you start to lose your power. When you lose your gratitude and thankfulness for God, you know what? You start losing your power. You lose your authority. You lose that genuine attitude that you have. I remember I had a buddy of mine, we were preaching together and 
man, he has such a heart for God and a person of prayer. And as, as the years went on, he, he got to a place to where we're preaching a conference and I didn't even recognize my old friend when we got there because he'd done some good things and had some success. And I, I gave him a, a warning word. I said, friend, you, you better check your heart. You better check, you know, your motives. Well, you know what? A year later, he's completely out of ministry. No longer doing ministry. He said, oh, I just... And he blames everybody and everything around him. But it was his own motives. I still pray for him. I still message him. And I say, hey, let's let's do ministry again. Come on, pick back up where you're going. And you know what he says? I mishandled the favor of God on my life. You can't mishandle the favor. Matthew 5 and 8. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. When you are walking with the pure heart, the hand of God is going to be upon you. The righteousness of God is going to be upon you. People ask me all the time, how do I do everything that I do? How do I, I manage, you know, a successful walk with God, successful marriage, great kids, all the successful ministries and businesses that we have? And I say, oh, you, you ask me those questions. But the thing is, do you see my early morning routine? Do you see my 90 minutes to two hours early in the morning that I'm spending with the Lord? You know, not that many people want, want my time between 4.30 to 6.30 in the morning. That's my time with God. That is the foundation of my day that I build upon. That is the foundation that I lay to put the favor of God on to move in everything that God has given me. Have you ever seen a minister that's been in ministry for 40 or 50 years and they are right on the cutting edge of what God is doing? They've been doing things right. Have you ever seen a business that grows and grows and grows? They're on the cutting edge of society. They have a mindset. And when you move forward with that, you will receive the favor of God on your life. Ephesians 1.11 Through our union with Christ, we too have been claimed by God as his own inheritance. Before we were even born, he gave us a destiny that we would fulfill the plan of God who always accomplishes every purpose that he plans in his heart. According to that scripture, there is no way you can fail unless you get in the way. If you do not complete your God assignment, if you do not fulfill the prophetic words over your life, it's your fault. Nobody else's. Nobody else can stop the plan and the flow that God has for you. The Holy Spirit is always there to pour out his favor upon his children that walk in righteousness. The ones who seek God with all of their heart. Second Chronicles 16 and 9. For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong on behalf of those whose heart is loyal to him. You know, a lot of people, they lie with their mouth, but you know what doesn't lie? Their fruit. The Bible says every tree is known by their fruit. I remember one day this religious person in our city came to me and they said, I just don't understand why everything you do is so blessed. I don't, and he kept telling me why he didn't understand. And I was looking at this guy and nothing he does is prospering. And I said, sir, everything comes from my personal relationship and devotion to Jesus Christ. And he said, yeah, but you know, you and I, we believe things a whole lot differently. And, and I gave him a, a, a minute when, you know, he was kind, so I gave him a minute. And, and I just said, sir, everything flows from the kingdom of God. Matthew 6, 10. And he looked at me and said, yeah, I don't know if I believe all of that. And I said, well, you keep talking about my fruit that is evident. Maybe you should lean in and learn the things of the kingdom of God. And when you do, why don't you start to make some kingdom adjustments to your life? And then you can start to flow in the power of God. When you start to get that favor, you know what comes next? That explosive anointing. 
I remember when I started traveling in, in ministry, I remember one day I was in this, this little church, had about 60 people, and I was praying, and I remember the Holy Spirit said, ask people to come up for healing. And so people came up for healing, I think it was like seven or eight people, and about 50% of them got, got healed, and I was so excited. And I was, I was driving home, I was talking to the Lord, and I was celebrating that half of the people got healed. The Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, what about the other half? And then I realized that in the kingdom of God, God wants everybody healed. From that moment on, I was going for 100%. The anointing of God upon my life increased because I brought in a kingdom mindset I had a heavenly perspective on what God wanted to do. 1 John 2, 27. But the wonderful anointing you have received from God is so much greater than their deception and now lives in you. When you have the anointing of God on your life to have a strong family, anointing to have a strong ministry, anointing to have a strong business, an anointing to be an, a phenomenal employee to somebody, when you have that anointing, people that do not understand will always be deceived. They will have a deception that if they focus on your success in the kingdom of God will literally make them sick. The Bible even says that people who their soul is wounded with jealousy, and envy and hatred towards other people, it will make them sick. When you walk in the anointing of God, a lot of people will rejoice. A lot of people will be ministered to by your anointing. But you know what? A lot of people will not celebrate your success. I was traveling to a revival I was preaching and it was about a seven hour trip. And so I drove and I remember about halfway there, I saw this barbecue joint and it looked like it was owned by country people. I pulled in and they said, barbecue so good, make you want to slap your mama. First of all, I would never slap my mama. I have too much honor and respect. But I walked in that barbecue place and I'm very dignified when I eat. When I got done eating, I had to change my shirt because I have barbecue sauce on my shirt. I have barbecue sauce running down my face. When I got done, I wiped my face off and I said, I need to see the cook. And this big guy walked out of there in overalls and I walked up. He said, you wanted to see the cook? And I said, yes. And I stuck my hand out like I was going to shake it, but I gave this man a hug. And I said, friend, I don't know if you are a believer or not, but you are anointed to make barbecue beef and barbecue chicken. He said, oh, yeah, I'm a believer, all right. And I said, friend, I just want to tell you, that is literally the best barbecue I have ever had in my life. And then all of a sudden, he got so real. And his mama came out around the corner. And she said, sir, we love people coming in. Because when you came in, I bet you felt the presence of God. I said, I did. She said, our anointing is to cook barbecue. It is to have a barbecue. It is for people to come in and eat and get the presence of God. And you know what? We pray for people here. And it was God's divine appointment for you to come in. And I said, okay. And so we prayed together right there. Listen, you can be anointed to preach. You can be anointed to start a business. And you could be anointed to get over a barbecue pit and have barbecue that is so good. People will be talking about it and write it in a book. There is an anointing that is on you. So what are you called to do? And don't ever let anybody talk you out of your anointing. Luke 4, 18. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor and sent me to proclaim liberty to the captives and recover sight to, to the blind and to set at liberty those who are oppressed. What anointing is setting on your life? Are you maxing out the anointing that God has called you to walk in? Now, I want to teach you something. The anointing is for two things, okay? 
I'm not talking about what this scripture just said. The anointing is to set people free so they can walk in freedom. I'm talking about you personally. God gives you a mantle and anointing, number one, to be a service to the things of God. Serve your local body, your church, the revival hub you're a part of. Serve people. I do a lot of videos. I write a lot of books, okay? I'm using my anointing to serve people. Also, God will give you an anointing to make finances for your family. You should be blessed out of the anointing that God has given you. I remember I was doing a revival and the pastor just looked, his countenance was heavy, his wife's countenance was heavy. And I said, guys, what's going on? And they said, well, we're struggling financially and we just can't figure out what to do about our church financially. I said, okay, well, I'll get a prophetic word. I'll give it to you. So Sunday morning, I, I was, you know, preached and then I prayed for everybody. And I noticed this one guy that came up for prayer. Sunday night, I preached and I noticed another guy. And so Monday night, I preached. People came all the time. I prayed for these, these two young couples that were just sharp. So I was talking to the pastor on, on Tuesday at lunch and, and I said, Pastor, let me ask you a question. Who is this one guy? He said, oh, he's the president of, of our local bank. Is he on your financial board? No, I didn't want to bother him, you know. He's busy. I said, okay. What about this, this one gentleman? Who's he? Oh, oh, he's the, the local financial guy. He's the one who people invest in. Is he on your church board? For finances? He goes, no, I didn't want to bother him because he blesses our community. That's okay. What about this one young couple? Oh, that young guy, he's about 35 years old. He has one of the biggest booming businesses in our city. Is he on your financial board? He said, no. What about this other guy? Oh, man, this guy, his dad was raised in business, and so he brought his son up in business, and his family owns multiple businesses, very successful. I said, sir, those four people are your financial board for your church. Why? I didn't want to bother them. I said, well, I don't want to know who's on your board, but are they all broken in poverty? He goes, now that you point that out, yes. I said, sir, they are anointed to move things forward and advance, and they understand kingdom finances. Put them on the board and let those broke jokers go and do something else. You're trying to put these people that are in poverty and make them into something that they're not. They are not anointed to do that. Put the people in the right place. I can't tell you how many times in my church, our church, we were praying for something and then God highlighted somebody that actually does the same thing. My wife and I were praying for a lot of different things um, that God to bring the right people in to help us. And you know what? The people we were looking for, they were in our mentoring program. God already had those people around me that had an anointing and were looking for an opportunity. And I was praying to be a blessing for somebody, for God to bring the right people. Sometimes what you need is right around you. And there's an anointing that is laying dormant on somebody that could be a benefit to what God has called you to do and be a huge blessing to them. So I asked the pastor if I could meet with those four men after church. And I said, hey, nothing against the, the financial board that, that you have now, but I want to show you something. So those four men agreed to meet with the pastor and myself. And I, and I asked the pastor, tell me the three places that you're struggling financially. And we had a long, long meeting that night. It lasted 15 minutes. And that pastor said, the three biggest things I needed were solved in 15 minutes by the four men who were anointed to do what I needed and they were sitting in our church. I can't tell you how many times I've been at a conference or something or at a church and somebody was praying that they really needed somebody with a strong anointing to help them in life. And I literally pointed at somebody and said, you're anointed in this one area and put the two people together and it helps. Listen, you carry an anointing that will provide for your family. You have an anointing that will bless the kingdom of God. Your anointing will bring kingdom adjustment to so many people. When you understand that, things will change in your life. Now, 
There's a lot of times in life people will come up to you and prophesy something to you and you know it's true, but you're scared. Don't be scared. Move in the things of God. You should be so far out of your comfort zone that your comfort zone is seven zip codes away from you. Get out there and do what God has called you to do. Walk in the favor of God and walk in the anointing of God.